Hi, uh, this is Hank Kroll. I'm the author of Cosmological Ice Ages, this massive book the size of a phone book. You can see it here. It's uh, This is a picture of me on the back of it here. <clears throat> I was on the Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie November 4th, and I didn't get to talk about how the moon was brought into orbit around Earth. He thinks I'm a crackpot. He doesn't believe in this sort of thing believes in uh, ghosts and spirits more than actual science. But uh, anyway, the, if the moon's been up there billions of years and was formed from the Pacific Ocean or formed when the Earth was formed, like I uh, was told in school, then where are the moon meteorites? You would think that uh, the Earth would be covered with moon meteorites, but mainstream science has only found 13.2 pounds two kilograms of moon meteorites on the Earth, and Mars about the same as Mars. Now, Mars is much further away from Earth than the moon, and it's got an atmosphere and a stronger gravity, so why the, is there the same amount of Mars meteorites on Earth as moon meteorites? You would think that there would be a great deal more. You should be able to go out on the desert there and uh, pick up moon meteorites and build houses out of them, but there's no moon meteorites on Earth. So what's the deal there? And then we searched all through all of the Google and everywhere looking for ancient cave paintings of the moon. And the oldest one we could find was 9,000 years old in China. It kind of looked like a moon. And our data, according to the ice core graphs in Antarctica, shows that something happened to the climate 11,700 year, 11 years ago or 12 years ago when the moon or when the earth came out of the ice last ice age, the pole was shifted from over Greenland to its present position, the rotational pole. Now there's only one object up there in the sky near us with enough mass to tilt the earth 23 and a half degrees in relation to the sun's rays. Now what this did, we somebody brought the moon in and hit the Arctic Ocean, created the Arctic Ocean, put a dent in the top of the globe that is five kilometers deep. And I use an online computer called Arizona EDU slash impact effects. Anyone can use this computer. You simply go online. You put the mass of the moon in there. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 E24 kilograms. And the mass of the moon is 7.35 E22 kilograms. And I use an angle of 11 degrees and a speed of 2 kilometers per second. And the data that came back is that it would depress Earth's crust 5 kilometers. Well, that Arctic Ocean up there is five kilometers deep on this northern and above Alaska. And there's also a range of mountains up there called the Brooks Range that has a constant radius that fits the diameter of the moon. Now, <clears throat> here we'll use this as an example of the Earth prior to the time that the uh, <clears throat> moon or the Earth was tilted 23 and a half degrees. The sun's rays hit directly on the equator. And there were large ice caps on the top and the bottom of the earth. And there was very little arable land, very few places to grow food. And uh, the earth wouldn't sustain very large populations. The reason why we had ice caps is that we were in orbit around Cirrus and we got blasted out to nine light years. This last orbit, it was they're decaying and we get further and further away from our host stars that created life on the planet. Sun does not have enough power to keep us out of ice ages, let alone break through an atmosphere of 750 pounds per square inch, extending 2,500 miles above the planet. The only thing that can do that is the Cirrus star system and Cirrus B that puts out 100 times more light than our sun. Uh, George asked me how close we come to it, and I was uh, didn't stay on point there, so I... I should have told him that we come within a tenth of a light year of Cirrus by our present calculations. But by tilting the Earth 23 and a half degrees, now you can see the sun uh, strikes more directly in the oceans and uh, 1,800 miles further north and south. As you go around the sun, it would be striking the Earth uh, further south and north is our orbit around the sun. So this, in fact, by tilling at 23 and a half degrees, doubles arable land. 
Now the Earth has this hole on the top that's five kilometers deep right now called the Arctic Ocean where the moon hit. It exterminated all of the camels, horses, and mastodons, and tribes of people in North America as it came in. And I used an angle of 11 degrees, and the data that came back is there were depressors five kilometers, and this ocean is five kilometers deep up here. And it wiped out everything in North America froze these mastodons with the green food in their mouths standing upright. They found them buried in the muck, gravel, and, and frozen ice. And on the southern end of the globe, you have this continent, Antarctica, that sticks out an average height above sea level, 6,500 feet. It, it's the antipode effect is the terminology used for that. When you hit an object, the uh, force is transmitted through the globe and Antarctica was raised up above sea level for 2,000 feet, three or 4,000 feet from the impact of the moon hitting the Arctic Ocean up on top here. Now, if you go into the book there and check out my um, <clears throat> actual hydrographic information of the Arctic Ocean there, you'll see that uh, there's a large hole there in the top of the globe. <clears throat> and I used... Um, something that looks like the moon there and it ricocheted off the earth and went into orbit 11,712 years ago. I know this is really hard for people to accept and I couldn't accept it myself but after I did the research and really did the studying on it and put the math together I had a lot of help doing this from various scientists around the world that you know, it just finally convinced me that this is the only thing that could have happened to uh, double arable land on the earth and double the productivity of the ocean for larger populations of humans and animals 11,712 years ago. Well, you can check the book out by going on to my websites, alaskapublishing.com or guarddogbooks.com. And uh, it's also available from Trafford. And uh, you can see it's a beautiful book. Now, the Horsehead Nebula is on the cover. Our sun was possibly born in this area. We are leaving the area of Orion and at 19 and a half kilometers per second, so I assume that our sun was born there. And that's about all I've got to say on the subject. You can check this out. The book's $30. It's two books in one. And uh, you get two books for your money there. Bye.